Living Power with Dan Hurd. So, the first two gifts that are mentioned are prophecy and serving. And so let's take a look at these and break them down and come to an understanding of them. The first one is the mention of prophecy. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his face. faith. <laughs> and here is the, uh, the definition of, of uh, prophecy. Proclaiming God's truths. The motivation to reveal unrighteous motives or actions by presenting God's truth. That is the definition of the gift of prophecy. Not foretelling, but proclaiming the word. Proclaiming God's truths. Being motivated to reveal unrighteous motives or actions by presenting the truth of God. Now, remember, your spiritual gift has to be combined with your ministry and your place of service. So we're just looking at really a part of the puzzle by looking at the spiritual gift. So, the biblical example of somebody, and, and there are a number of examples in each gift we're going to take a look at, we'll have a biblical example. But the biblical example for the gift of prophecy was Peter. Peter was very obviously a prophet. I mean, he had this gift of prophecy as we've defined it. So let's look at these characteristics. There's ten of them. Ten characteristics of a person who has the gift of prophecy. First of all, that person has a need to express thoughts and ideas verbally, especially regarding right and wrong. Uh, the need to express thoughts and ideas verbally, especially regarding right and wrong. A person who has the gift of prophecy wants to speak out wants to proclaim something, wants to say something, especially regarding right and wrong. And a great example of this is, is uh, what happened at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 14. We see Peter over and over and over again exercising this characteristic. He just spoke out to the people. Remember, he'd been hiding, afraid for his own life until the Holy Spirit came upon him. And then all of a sudden he's out in the streets of Jerusalem, the very place that they crucified Jesus. He's out there and, and all of these people who had been filled with the Holy Spirit were acting somewhat different from everybody else. And everybody wondered what in the world is going on. And Peter speaks up and he says, look, these guys aren't crocked as you think. These guys, these guys are not drunk. These guys, it's only nine in the morning. This is something very different. This is something very unique. This is something very special. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Peter begins speaking out against the, uh, the, the actually the tyranny of Phariseeism. And he's saying, look, this is what God is doing in the lives of people who are obedient to him. This is what he wants to do. It's not about all your laws and rules and regulations and, and traditions. and the, You've got to do it this way and you've got to act this way and you've got to look this way and you've got to dress this way and all of that. It's not about that. It's about the Holy Spirit working in your life. And he begins to verbally speak out about right and wrong. In Acts, uh, in, 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 in picking up verse 22, Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles. God confirmed that Jesus was who he says he was by his miracles and wonders and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge and you, here he is again just proclaiming and speaking out about right and wrong, you with the help of wicked men put him to death and nail him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him up from the agony of death because it's impossible for death to keep its hold on him. And then later, verse 36, and this is mentioned over and over and over again, and uh, Peter speaks out against this. These are just examples. But verse 36, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, I look at this, and it just, it, it just amazes me about this, this person with this particular gift. If you'll recall, just a few days before, he had been cowering in the courtyard saying he didn't even know Jesus. And now, empowered by the Holy Spirit and functioning under his, the work of the Holy Spirit and his, his gift. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, and functioning under the power of the Holy Spirit in his spiritual gift. Now he's in the streets of that very city proclaiming these things. What happened? He was empowered by the Holy Spirit, but he was operating in his spiritual gift. So, there is a need to express uh, thoughts and ideas verbally. Uh, especially regarding right and wrong.